Hi, you're with Chandeep at Goodly once again. And in this video, I'm going to talk about an interesting waffle chart that I have created in Power BI. Now, this waffle chart itself doesn't hold very high analytical value, but you can actually learn from the DAX patterns that I have used, the visualization that I have used, and creatively how I put things together. Um, this was just a fun exercise. Let's just take a look at how do we build a waffle chart on our own in Power BI. All right, quick interruption in the video. Later this month, I am actually going to be doing a live training session on Power BI. And we're going to be focusing on the hard parts of Power BI. We're going to be focusing on Power Query, Data Modeling, and DAX. If you've recently started with Power BI and you have struggled to learn data modeling, Power Query, and DAX in a structured way, and you need my help, you've watched the videos, you've liked the way that I teach, and you'd like to enroll for the session, this is going to be a great learning opportunity. Note that this is going to be a live training session. And if you're the type of person who would like to sit along with the trainer and you'd like to get your doubts sorted, um, you know, get your doubts clarified as you move along in the training, get some assignments right after the training session, it's going to be a phenomenal learning opportunity. Now, just two more things. There is definitely going to be a last date for the training because we are starting later this month. So check that out. And also, uh, there are 15 seats available and of which five seats have been filled up. So in case you want a spot for yourself, do not wait and just fix up a spot for yourself. That's all about it. And uh, we'll just get started with this video. All right, I'm in Power BI and that's where I have created this waffle chart that you can see it on the screen. I'm going to explain you the workings of the waffle chart. Probably you haven't heard of this term. I'll tell you what it does and then maybe you can take a look at the workings and the internals as to how have I built this particular type of a visual. So. Here, I have the option of creating a percentage, like writing some value, and that is going to actually fill up the blocks here, and it's going to fill up those number of blocks depending upon the value that I write. So let's just say that if I have written 57 here, you can see that of the 100 blocks that I have, 57 blocks are filled. So 57% has been achieved, whatever that might be. If I change that to, let's say, 27, it's going to fill up uh, just 27 blocks. If I change that to 99, it's going to fill up 99 blocks. If I change that to let's say five blocks it's just gonna maybe just fill up the five blocks so that's like a little waffle chart that i have created it actually fills up blocks depending upon what percentage has been achieved can be a creative way of presenting the data i just want to show you that how do you actually create this type of a chart now to be able to make this type of a waffle chart first of all i needed 100 blocks because unless i have 100 blocks i would not be able to fill and unfill certain amount of blocks depending upon what the user is typing the first thing is to have is have 100 blocks so how do we actually create 100 blocks so what i did was i created a matrix visual a 10 by 10 matrix visual so 10 rows and 10 columns and that is going to give me uh, like 100 blocks how do you create a 10 by 10 matrix you need to have a table to be able to create that and i created a table for that Let's just go take a look at a small table that I have created, which is a new table that I have created. In this particular table, it's a very simple piece of code. All that I'm doing is generating numbers 1 to 10 right here, which is a small table. And again, generating numbers 1 to 10. And this is then, these two tables are then cross-joined here at the bottom. And therefore, 10 multiplied by 10, I get 100 values. And one of the column is the x-axis and the other column is actually the y-axis. That's how I create this 10 by 10 kind of values. Now, once I create a table with 100 rows and each having one to 10 of values, I'll be very easily be able to create a matrix, which is a 10 by 10 matrix. Let me just help you understand that. So if I just go over to the visual and create a blank matrix, just to help you understand that at the start, how does it look like? In this particular matrix, I have this new table. In this new table, I will drag my x-axis to the columns and y-axis to the rows. And that is the table that I have created. So that's X and that's Y. And these are the tables that I have created. Now, once you have the table, the matrix, and where you have 100 like cells now, the second target or the second thing to achieve is that how would you fill these 100 cells? Like you need some piece of DAX to be able to color these or fill these or something, uh, depending upon what the user is typing. So you need to fill all of these values here. So I've written a very simple DAX code and you should actually take a look at that. So here is a DAX code. In this DAX code, let me just help you understand this. So let's just assume that the user is typing a value of 57, right? Now, once the user is typing 57, the first thing that I need to do is I need to fill five rows and seven blocks of the sixth row. That's what I need to do. To be able to do that, I need to separate out five and seven separately. So I am, first of all, I'm trying to extract number five from here. 
which is what I need to understand that I need to at least fill five rows. And then I also need to extract number seven from here. That means seven more cells of the next row need to be filled up. So five and seven should be extracted. So the five extracted is nothing but the percentage process, this particular value, uh, the variable. And the seven goes to this particular variable, which is the decimal value right here. So once I have five and seven, then I build some very, very simple checks here. And the first check here is that, uh, just take a look at uh, are five rows filled or not? That's the first check. And the second check is that, hey, after the five rows have been filled, why don't you actually fill up seven more cells of the next row? So it's a very simple tax code. You can actually take a look at that and that actually fills it up. Now, the interesting part is if you take a look at this particular visual, in this visual, we have blocks or like, the, like a black box and a white box. How do you actually build these boxes? So what I have done here is that in the code, I have used these unique uh, unicar characters which are nothing but 11,035. 11,035 is nothing but going to give you a filled black box and 11,036 is going to give you uh, like a white box, right? Nothing filled inside of it. And once you kind of uh, run this through in this particular logic, and once I actually take this code and I put this into this particular uh, visual right here, it's actually going to generate a code like this. Let's just take a look what's going on here so that code is right here and you can see that as of now five percent have been filled up so only five rows are getting filled up we can just leave the total aside so i can just go over to the um, format here take out the totals so totals are going to be off and off no thank you we don't need them and you can see that now five blocks are being filled up so if i just ended up writing 57 it's actually going to fill up five here and uh, you know the next row is going to fill up these now obviously this actually fills up from the bottom this actually fills up from the top this is nothing but sorting and you can easily sort this so if i just click here it actually gets sorted in the other order from the bottom to the top and that's actually all good now, I have also done a lot of formatting to be able to make this matrix look like this. So a lot of uh, changing of the color, making sure all the boxes are of the same size, uh, removing all the banded rows and stuff like that. And once all the formatting is done, this is eventually going to look something like this. All right. Now, the other way in which you can actually make this kind of a waffle chart is by not really using the unique character different codes here. You can also use something like conditional formatting and color some of the blocks as blue and some of the blocks as uh, white or something. So that's where what I have done. There, there's another piece of code that I have written to be able to apply color. If you take a look at code number two, the only difference in this particular code is that instead of using the unique character, I am actually using this particular hex code to actually apply the colors right here through the conditional formatting. And that's all about it. And you, once you kind of apply this particular code uh, to this particular matrix, same matrix, no difference whatsoever. It just applies color rather than these icons. All right, that was a little fun exercise of creating a waffle chart in Power BI. I don't even know if Microsoft has got any custom visuals on creating waffle charts or not. If they have it, that's awesome. If they don't, now you and I both know that there is a way to create a custom waffle chart uh, using simple matrix, simple DAX. Uh, and putting these things together to make a waffle chart. I'm not sure that how much of value does it contain, analytical value, but you can definitely make use of the simple visual and the DAX patterns that I have used in some other creative aspect of Power BI. I've also created an infographics chart, which I did not know at the time was called a waffle chart back in a couple of years back in Excel. You should actually also take a look at that if you're interested in implementing this particular technique in Excel. The other thing that I want to shout out about is my live classroom style training on Power BI that's upcoming in a few days. If you haven't re yet registered for it, do uh, check it out. It's going to be a live one-on-one -on -one, uh, training on Power BI, which is where I'll talk about complicated, difficult concepts of Power BI, which is Power Query, Tax and Data Modeling. And we're going to have a lot of fun and it's going to be a live training where all of us get together and learn the hard parts of Power BI. Uh, the instructions to that particular training and registering and all of that information is down in the link below. You should actually take a look at that. There are only 15 seats available. I don't know how many seats have been taken. The last time I saw it was about seven or eight seats have been taken um, or seven or eight seats remaining. I'm not really sure about that. Take a look at it. If you're interested, I will see you actually in the training. If you have any questions around this, please feel free to put down a comment and I will be glad to reply. Thanks so much for spending time with me and I will see you in the next one. Cheers. Bye.